In 2004, members of the Santa Cruz County Emergency Medical Commission became aware of an emerging trend in the survival rates of people experiencing a heart attack outside a hospital environment. The higher the community involvement in pre-hospital emergency medical response, the better the outcome for heart attack victims. When bystanders, friends, or family members begin hands-only CPR, the survival rate of people suffering a heart attack more than doubled. If an automatic external defibrillator, or AED, was available and used, the rate of survival climbed to 90%. The Santa Cruz County Emergency Medical Commission is made up of representatives of fire and paramedic agencies, county government officials, emergency room physicians, and members of the community. One member of the commission held a strong belief in the value of public education programs. She felt information on the benefits of bystander involvement should be communicated to the public as a presentation to groups and called it, Be a Friend, Save a Friend. This unique Santa Cruz County program is based on national data on the importance of bystander involvement, plus the personal experiences of members of the commission. In addition to information about heart attacks, identifying symptoms of a stroke was added to the program's content. The core concepts of the Be a Friend, Save a Friend program are recognize and act on signs of heart attack and stroke, call 911 fast, be willing to do CPR, be willing to use an automatic external defibrillator if one is available. In the past few years, the presentation has been given to thousands of people at the annual county fair as well as to groups or organizations upon request. The goal of this video is to expand the audience of the Be a Friend, Save a Friend program and add the voices of local physicians, nurses, and first responders to support the value of following the program's recommendations. Success is measured by the willingness of members of our community to act quickly to help others experiencing a heart attack or stroke. It can save lives. We'll hear from firefighters, paramedics, and 911 dispatchers about the importance of not delaying at the first sign of trouble, but calling for help immediately. Physicians and nurses will describe what happens to the human body during a heart attack or stroke. They'll tell us why it's so important to start treatment in the field as help is coming, and about the advanced care available at the hospital once you arrive. There is a how-to segment on hands-only CPR, the use of automatic external defibrillators, and identifying the signs of someone experiencing a stroke. For those concerned about legal responsibilities, an emergency medicine attorney will be talking about your protections under California's Good Samaritan laws. Let's start with some facts about heart attack and stroke. 1.2 million Americans will suffer a heart attack this year. Heart disease is the number one cause of death among adults in America. Cancer is second, and stroke is number three. Heart disease is the number one killer of women and men. Stroke is debilitating, deadly, and costly. Now let's look at the numbers for Santa Cruz County. We have a population of about 300,000. 12% are age 62 and over, this up nearly 3% since 1997. About 500 people in the last two years suffered sudden, out-of-hospital heart attacks. About 150 people die from stroke each year, which is twice the number since 1996. When symptoms occur, people tend to delay seeking help. Some try to convince themselves it's nothing and the problem will pass. Others contact friends or relatives and seek support for their it's nothing belief. Another response for some is to isolate themselves, cutting themselves off from help. Hi Sally, I'm Kara. I'm one of the nurses. In fact, time is the most critical factor in saving people from heart attacks and strokes. This is why one of the components of the Be a Friend, Save a Friend program is don't stall, make the call. Now we'll look at the chain of survival and see how the emergency medical system works together to save lives. First, the basics of how one link works with the next, then we'll see how the system worked to save the life of one of our neighbors. The chain of survival begins by contacting the 911 dispatchers immediately. Early access to the emergency system gets firefighters and paramedics on their way to you when seconds count. Remember, don't stall, make the call. In the case of a heart attack, 
Providing the victims hands-only CPR is a significant contributor to increasing survival rate. When a person collapses, their blood is full of oxygen, but the heart is no longer able to move the blood through the body. This results in tissue dying, such as the heart muscle, because it becomes starved for oxygen. Hands-only CPR helps move the oxygen-rich blood through the body. The third link in the chain is the use of an automatic external defibrillator. These are also called AEDs and can be found in public buildings or gyms. Look for the symbol and remember their locations. These devices are intended for use by untrained individuals and when activated, provide audio instructions on their operation. The fourth and final link is early advanced care. Today, first responders bring the emergency room to you. As treatment begins in the field, the local emergency room is notified of the victim's symptoms, helping the hospital staff to prepare for advanced levels of treatment once the patient arrives. Let's see how the chain of survival concept worked in a real-world situation. We'll follow the events that happened to the Simpson family early in the morning, two days before Christmas, a couple of years ago. The Simpsons, John and Sue, and their son Jason. Early in the morning, John and his son were getting ready to go to work. Suddenly, John sneezed and lost consciousness. Jason was immediately aware something was wrong and called for his mother to phone 911. At the same time, he started CPR on his father. When Sue spoke to the 911 dispatcher, she was able to relay additional instructions on CPR technique to Jason from the dispatcher as help was on its way. Let's move on to the next link in this chain of survival, the 911 dispatcher. Two days before Christmas, I took a 911 phone call and it was a why for a woman reporting that her husband had just collapsed on the floor. And from the information that we use for medical calls and the questions that we asked, we were able to determine that he had just suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. And as a dispatcher, not only did I start the fire department and the ambulance to the scene, but I was also able to provide instructions over the phone on opening up his airway and starting chest compressions, which the wife relayed to her son, and he was able to continue with those chest compressions until the fire department arrived on scene. And then, of course, they took over and then transported to the hospital. And um, it was a case where I know that it made a difference, not just that I was here, but that the family called 911 and were able to stay calm and tell us what exactly happened and stayed calm in order to provide the assistance to their family member, which had a good result because I got to meet him earlier this year and his wife and their son. Now the next link. Here's Daniel O'Brien, one of the county's paramedics who responded to the Simpsons. I'm a paramedic for the County of Santa Cruz and an employee of American Medical Response. Uh, in my three years as a paramedic, I've seen a number of different situations that have been improved by the Be a Friend, Save a Friend program. One that comes to mind is a gentleman, approximately 60 on NAPTOS, who in the early morning hours went into cardiac arrest. Luckily, his family was on scene and immediately began CPR. They also initiated 911 and got some assistance from dispatch as to their CPR technique. NAPTOS fire arrived shortly thereafter and we arrived within a minute or two of them. The patient was treated on scene and transported to an area hospital where he made a full recovery. In my opinion, it was definitely the immediate CPR provided by the family and the instructions to them from dispatch that saved the patient's life. If you have an emergency situation, don't hesitate to call 911 and take their advice, which could save somebody's life. This is the last link in our story, advanced care. Here are the two emergency room nurses who treated John. Stephanie Head and Allison Welsh. So the most important thing that I would say to the family member is to activate EMS, call 911, and then begin CPR. In uh, the gentleman that we saved in December of 2008, what made a significant difference in that man's recovery is that the son had begun CPR out in the field. Tissue uh, begins to die as quickly as four minutes. You have enough oxygen in the blood. If you can just get down and start doing compressions until help arrives, that can make a significant difference in your loved one's survival. 
And once EMS has been activated out in the field, they can call the hospital on the radio and give the emergency room a, a picture of what's happening with the patient, which allows the emergency room to call in the ancillary staff that might be needed for labs, x-rays, EKGs, etc., before the patient even gets to the emergency room. And uh, then we can also activate the cath lab, which is really important because time is muscle. And once those vessels are opened up, the patient will have a much better outcome. Santa Cruz County is a small but geographically diverse county with some parts urban and some rural. You may wonder if the emphasis on calling the 911 dispatchers quickly applies to you and the area you live in. Here are two points of view on that question from first responders, firefighter paramedic Mike Fye, with Aptos La Selva Fire Protection District and Captain Paramedic Lawrence Erickson with Cal Fire. I've been a firefighter paramedic for 20 years. Uh, I've also been actually an EMS for about 33. Um, and I've seen where people kind of hesitate and they don't call 911 right away. It would really help us if they call 911 uh, get us going. Uh, we can arrive on the scene. Even this urban setting where, where our response is fairly quick, um, it really helps us out. To, uh, people call us as quick as possible. Um, we arrive with the, the emergency room equipment. We have all the medications, the heart monitor, the oxygen. Um, also, we have communication with both emergency rooms. I just returned from a medical aid call in one of the more rural areas of Santa Cruz County. I've been working for CAL FIRE for roughly 25 years now and I've seen both satisfactory and unsatisfactory outcomes from, from medical aid calls in rural areas. One of the common denominators that you'll see with the more satisfactory outcomes is the person who has called 911 early and that's where it's imperative for you to be able to recognize early on the need to call for help and get the appropriate resources started. Some may be reluctant to become involved when they see an unconscious person. They fear they will be legally liable if they try to help. This is Michael Balch, Regional Director of CalSTAR, the Helicopter Ambulance Service for Santa Cruz County. He is also a paramedic, registered nurse, and an attorney. He will tell us about the protections provided by Good Samaritan laws to those who try to help others under emergency conditions. The current state of the Good Samaritan law in California is that it will provide protection or immunities to a person who renders emergency medical care to someone in need. So a person providing CPR to a heart attack victim certainly falls into that category and will qualify for immunity in that circumstance. What the California courts have done is said that you won't necessarily have immunity for emergency non-medical care. In the circumstance, for example, where a person rescues someone from a motor vehicle accident and pulls them out of a, a car without using the same amount of care that a professional rescuer would give, would not necessarily qualify for those protections. But in the circumstance where a person renders CPR to a heart attack victim, or in the circumstance where a person calls 911 for a stroke victim and follows the directions of the 911 operator in giving medical care to the stroke victim, those circumstances would definitely qualify for immunities or protections under the California Good Samaritan Law. For most of us in Santa Cruz County, advanced medical care means the Dominican Hospital. To learn more about what happens to us during a heart attack or stroke, why immediate action is so vital to survival, and the types of treatments we would receive, here are physicians and nurses from Dominican. The coronary arteries run over the surface of the heart. As we get older, we develop plaque inside the walls of the arteries. This plaque can either slowly grow over time to block the arteries and thus with exertion you can get pain or pressure in your chest or the same plaque can get a crack in it, expose the inside of it to the blood within the arteries and lead to the rather abrupt blockage of the artery due to a clot. So the mechanism, reason that people have a heart attack is both due to the plaque within the artery wall and due to the clot that develops 
um, during the actual episode. The treatment for heart attack is time dependent, which means it's absolutely important to begin the treatment right away. When a person is experiencing chest pain or other symptoms of a heart attack, what's happening is that blood flow to the heart has been blocked, and any muscle beyond that blockage will begin to die in a number of hours unless blood flow is restored. So it's vital to call 911 right away. This will bring the paramedics to you. They can give you oxygen and take your blood pressure and monitor your heart. If need be, they can alert the emergency department that you are coming and the team will be ready to deliver treatment immediately. In the unusual case that you come across somebody who is unconscious and without a pulse and not breathing, it is very important to begin CPR immediately. So in addition to calling 911, we'd like you to begin hands-only CPR, which is basically chest compressions. This delivers blood to the vital organs until the paramedics can arrive. Studies show that when a bystander jumps in and begins hands-only CPR, the chances of the victim surviving more than double. It is also important to try to locate an AED, or an Automated External Defibrillator. If you do not know where there is one, the dispatchers at 911 can tell you. The AED essentially shocks the heart and restarts it. Again, research shows that when an AED is applied in a timely manner, the chances of the victim surviving are more than 80%. So please, don't stall, make the call. Call 911 and you can save a friend. When someone has a heart attack and arrives at Dominican Hospital, our goal is to get that artery open as quickly as possible. A heart attack occurs when an artery to the heart becomes blocked. This artery supplies blood to part of the heart muscle and the heart muscle becomes damaged. The longer that artery is closed, the more damage occurs. So we want to get it open quickly. The goal is to get that artery open within 90 minutes, and here at Dominican Hospital, we average about 68 minutes. The way we get it open is through a procedure called cardiac catheterization. This is a procedure where we put a catheter, a small rubber tube, in through an artery in the leg and up into the heart. And we, through that, we can insert a balloon and open up that artery. The procedure is virtually painless and, as I mentioned, done quickly. If we can take care of that, usually the heart muscle damage is minimized and patients are often ready to go home within a couple of days. A stroke is due to a sudden loss of function of some area of the brain. This loss of function is usually experienced as weakness or numbness on one side of the body or one side of the face, loss of vision, loss of the ability to speak clearly or to think of words normally, or many other symptoms. There are several different causes for strokes. One is the blockage of an artery by a blood clot, and this blood clot can come from the carotid arteries when, they, when the arteries are clogged with debris, or it could come from the heart. The other common cause of stroke is bleeding in the brain, and this is most commonly caused by high blood pressure. Dominican Hospital is a nationally certified stroke center. As a stroke center, we are here for you 24 hours a day. If you come to our emergency department with any signs or suspicion of stroke, we stop everything we're doing. We activate a rapid response team. The rapid response team consists of a neurologist, a critical care nurse, and radiology experts. We scan your brain. From the brain scan, we determine what the appropriate action is for what is happening at that time. We follow up with appropriate interventions and make sure that you have full support in your recovery in the community, in the hospital, and in your home if necessary. We're here for you to help recover fully from a stroke. When you come to Dominican Hospital with symptoms of what you might believe would be, might be an acute stroke, we bring you right back into the emergency department and you'll be met by a team of techs, uh, nurses, and a physician. Uh, we'll uh, start an IV and draw blood, uh, do an electrocardiogram, and talk to you about what your symptoms are. Uh, if we we'll also do a physical examination. If we believe you're having an acute stroke, we'll activate our stroke protocol, uh, which means you'll go straight to the CT scanner and obtain a CAT scan to find out, to, to confirm our diagnosis of acute stroke. If you are having an acute stroke, uh, we call our neurologist and our stroke team on call to come evaluate you and see if you're a candidate for clot-busting drugs. Um, whether you are or not a candidate, 
uh, you'll be admitted to the hospital for expert stroke management by our stroke team um, and our neurologists and intensivists. This is Brad Kramer. He's the Clinical and Education Coordinator for American Medical Response in Santa Cruz County. They provide paramedic services for Santa Cruz. He'll talk about the basics of performing hands-only CPR, how to use an automatic external defibrillator, or AED, and how to recognize the symptoms of stroke. It's important to remember CPR is effective no matter the cause of the cardiac arrest or the age of the patient. Bottom line, CPR works. In a recent study in Santa Cruz County, it was shown that your chance of survival more than doubles if bystander CPR is performed before emergency crews arrive. The American Heart Association sets standards for CPR training and has released new guidelines for hands-only CPR for bystanders. The new guidelines recommend calling 911 to get emergency crews dispatched and then providing only chest compressions until they arrive. The dispatchers at the 911 call center are trained to provide you instructions over the phone on performing CPR. Recent studies of pre-hospital emergency treatment given to victims of heart attacks show that bystanders are no longer required to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilations when doing CPR. When someone collapses into sudden cardiac arrest, the most important thing is to start chest compressions immediately for the first four to five minutes. Ventilating the patient can wait. Adults who suddenly collapse and are not responsive are likely to have a sudden cardiac arrest, and their chance of survival is near zero unless CPR is started immediately. Even if the person is not having a sudden cardiac arrest, CPR can still be beneficial by getting them to respond. If that occurs, CPR can be stopped. Otherwise, chest compression should be continued until EMS crews arrive. Remember that dispatchers at the 911 Center for Santa Cruz County can provide you assistance and coaching on performing CPR. To summarize bystander CPR, you place your hands in the center of the person's chest and push hard, push fast, performing two compressions a second until emergency crews arrive. As someone considering providing treatment for sudden cardiac arrest in the form of bystander CPR, you should know that California has legal protections in place called the Good Samaritan Laws that allow you to perform bystander CPR without fear of being sued. The two parts of hands-only CPR are calling 911, then positioning yourself to perform chest compressions. If you come across an unconscious person or see someone suddenly collapse, you need to call 911 or instruct someone nearby to call 911, then perform chest compressions with minimal interruptions. Now that emergency crews are on the way, you will need to start CPR. Kneel next to the patient near their chest, then place your hands one on top of the other in the center of the person's chest. Make sure your elbows are straight and you have your shoulders over your hands. This will allow you to provide chest compressions for four to five minutes without tiring your arm muscles out. You want to use the weight of your chest and your shoulders to provide the compression rather than pushing with just your arms. You want to be able to compress the chest about two inches. Once you're in position, perform chest compressions at a rate of 100 per minute or about two every second. It's important to remember to allow the chest to rebound at the top of each compression so the heart can refill with blood. You don't want your hands to come off the chest. You want them to return to the place they were in when you started the compression. For the first five minutes, that's all that is needed. Continue performing chest compressions until emergency crews arrive. Remember that performing chest compressions more than doubles the person's chance of survival. The emphasis is on learning CPR and being willing to use it, not on getting certified. There are online and DVD programs that allow you to learn CPR in your home in as little as 30 minutes. More information on learning opportunities will be available at the end of this program. The Automated External Defibrillator, or AED, is a computerized medical device. AEDs are an important link in the chain of survival. They can check a person's heart rhythm and recognize a rhythm that requires a shock. AEDs provide electrical stimulation to the heart so that it can reset and begin beating on its own. AEDs have been designed to be used by bystanders with no previous training. Once turned on, the AED will provide verbal instructions that direct the user through each life-saving step. The AED has a computer chip that can determine if the patient requires defibrillation and how much electrical energy to provide. There is no risk of improper defibrillation to the patient. 
Further, there is no shock risk to the user as long as the clear verbal instructions provided by the machine are followed. Remember, AEDs help save lives. Studies have shown that if a person requires defibrillation and if you can apply an AED within one minute of collapse, there's a 90% chance of their heart starting again. For every minute that goes by, their chance of survival decreases by 10%. AEDs are being installed throughout Santa Cruz County. To find an AED, look for this symbol. The AED will usually be mounted on the wall in a clearly marked box that is not locked. Become familiar with the location of AEDs in areas you commonly visit, such as health clubs, government buildings, workplaces, or grocery stores. These are just some of the examples of places where you might find an AED. The dispatchers at the 911 Center for Santa Cruz County are familiar with the location of many AEDs and can help direct you to them. When someone collapses in sudden cardiac arrest, your first steps are to call 911. Then, if an AED is available, attach the AED before beginning CPR. The 911 dispatcher may notify you of an AED at your location. Be sure to look around the area. You may see the symbol for a public access AED. If there's an AED available, you should attach it to the patient before starting CPR. You will need to bear the person's chest in order to apply the AED pads. Once you have the person's chest bare, you'll need to remove the AED from its case and follow the printed instructions for turning the power on the device. Then follow the verbal instructions provided by the AED. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Peel Following the device's audio instructions and the illustrations provided on the pads, peel them from their plastic liner and place them on the victim's bare chest. After the pads are attached, the machine will tell you to stand clear of the patient and not touch them while it analyzes the heart rhythm. Once it's analyzed the rhythm, it will either say no shock advised and begin CPR, or that a shock is advised and ask you to stand clear while the machine charges. Once it is charged, the shock button will begin to blink, and then it will ask you to press the button to deliver the shock. No one should touch the patient. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press the flashing orange button now. D shock delivered. Be sure emergency medical services have been called. It is safe to touch the patient. After the shock is delivered, the machine will prompt you to perform CPR for two minutes, and then it will reanalyze. As with CPR, you should be aware the Good Samaritan laws California has in place to protect bystanders from liability were expanded in 1999 to include bystander AED use in addition to performing CPR. Stroke is a debilitating, deadly, and costly disease. Over 150,000 people in the U.S. die from strokes each year. 30% of people suffering their first stroke will have permanent physical or mental impairment. Americans will spend $62 billion this year to pay for stroke-related care. To optimize recovery from a stroke event, you need to receive care at an emergency department when the first symptoms of stroke appear. You have your best chance of making a recovery if treatment is received within three hours of the first symptoms of onset. Dispatchers at the Santa Cruz County 911 call center and emergency crews are there to help you and provide the techniques and procedures that offer you the best chance of survival. Calling 911 immediately gets the emergency crews to bring the ER to you. The crews can then deliver you to the appropriate hospital where you can continue to receive life-saving care. Some of the warning signs of stroke are numbness or weakness on one side of the body, trouble speaking or understanding speech, loss of vision in one eye, a sudden severe headache, or unsteadiness, dizziness, or unexplained falls. Not all of the warning signs have to be present for you to suspect stroke. Some strokes present with only one symptom or very subtle signs. If you think someone may be having a stroke, you can perform a very simple four question or FAST test. Face, ask the person to smile. Does one side of their face droop? 
arms. Ask the person to raise their arms out in front of them. Does one arm droop down or drift out to the side? Speech. Ask the person to repeat a simple sentence. Are their words mumbled? Is their speech slurred? And did they forget part of the sentence? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, the fourth question is time. When did the patient begin having these symptoms? Call 911 immediately if you or another person has any of these signs or symptoms. Emergency crews bring advanced cardiac and stroke care to your door. Early access to 911 provides you with the best chance of survival and decreasing permanent damage from strokes and heart attacks. This program has described what you can do to help your friends, coworkers, relatives, or simply another person walking down the street to survive two of the top three killers of adults in America. We've talked about identifying the symptoms of heart attack and stroke, heard from physicians and nurses why immediate action is needed to survive these deadly killers, and demonstrated the techniques of hands-only CPR and the use of automatic external defibrillators. Now it's up to you. Before an emergency happens, decide to act. Don't stall, make the call. Perform CPR and use a defibrillator while help is on its way. To learn basic CPR, contact one of the following agencies in Santa Cruz County. American Red Cross, Dominican Hospital Education Department, Emergency Training Service, Watsonville Community Hospital Education Department, American Heart Association, Family and Friends CPR Anytime, or contact your local fire department for CPR classes.